Uh, Alright, so uh, just to get things started, uh, how long have you folks been doing the local Alaska music scene? Well, our first show, uh, or live appearance rather, was a open mic night at Taproot, and that would have been in... That would be Humpies. Um, oh, my bad, yeah. that was Humpies, and that was in March of 2010. And we've been gigging at least once every two or three months since then, usually more like twice a month. That's, that's pretty good for the Alaska scene. Mm -hmm. Boy, do I know. Uh, so one thing I noticed about uh, your guys' <laughs> style is that you're not afraid to really dig deep into the roots of classical rock and roll. Uh, the biggest symptom of this is probably the sort of songs that you guys choose to cover when you're playing on stage, like Led Zeppelin and The Doors. Uh, so what inspired you guys to uh, pursue this direction when so few bands do nowadays? It's what we like to a, to a large degree. I mean, we just... Our covering process is basically, hey guys, I can kind of play this. Do you want to cover this song? For instance, uh, Good Times, Bad Times, or uh, Bring It On Home, or for a not Zeppelin cover, we do uh, Wonderful Tonight, and... We recently did started, uh, started we recently started doing War Pigs. Yeah. And that, was, that was from the last couple months, actually. Yeah. It's I, I... pretty much just, what do y'all like, and can we make it work with our lineup, and so what, far... What can we do to make it answers. ours? We just kind of did what we like to listen to, you know, try to have those influences in our music and just have fun playing them. So, no Kesha anytime soon? No. No. There, there was talk. I, I would really <laughs> love to play. <laughs> what, <I> talk? <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> I'd love to play a heavy metal version of Gangnam Style, but that's <laughs> another story. <laughs> um, another unique aspect of your guys' live performances is that you're all multi-instrumentalists. And you can change your lineup amongst yourselves. It must be really nice to uh, have a whole entire band to back you up with that much talent. Um, how in the world did you guys meet up in the first place? So well, basically, <laughs> um, when I was a freshman in high school, um, I didn't have any friends right off, and I was into this thing called free running. <laughs> like, like, if you've seen the new James Bonds, that thing where they're running and jumping and climbing over everything. And Tony was into that. So we kind of bonded over that, and uh, I think Carl and Tony are friends already. Tony and I uh, met because uh, we both liked this band, 38 Special. We came to discover that on uh, ROTC trip up to Fairbanks when we were back in uh, when we were into that. And then uh, the second thing that happened was we both had very very poor grades. We couldn't actually be on the team. So we were both the people who had to film the team. And so just the, the bonding that happens when you're standing there for five hours while all of your other friends are doing what you want to do. Uh. <laughs> it was just like, I don't think we were, we would like leave the camera unattended for a couple minutes. Just be like, ah, just do it. <laughs> and then uh, Thunderfish had been going for about two years. And at the time, we had been a five-piece composed of uh, me, Tony, Carl, um, a girl named Caitlin White, who's no longer with us, and a guy named Josh Hetner, who is also no longer with us, obviously. And then an incident basically occurred, which led to um, both of them quitting and us having two gigs lined up. Now, about two months, three months prior to this, uh, we had met Alex the Viking on what amounted to like a tour that the band went on, a uh, mini tour out to Palmer and Wasilla, and we did a show in Eagle River as well. And everybody was like, no, wait, okay, how are we going to deal with this? How are we going to deal with the fact that we have to do these shows when we've got half the band just quit? And I was like, let's just call some people, let's find somebody to fill in and then see what we can do. Um, we called up Alex the Viking. He came over, did a practice with us. Uh, me, Tony, and Carl decided that we wanted him to be around. He decided, obviously, that he wanted to stay, and it fit so well. If you ever Wait, left, what would did we tell you? you? <laughs> I mean, I love it. <laughs> we agreed to let you on camera on one condition. <laughs> no, but it was a really interesting time because literally within two or three weeks, we had we lost two members of the band, and it was back to just the original trio that it started out as and we were just really back to basics there was a couple songs we couldn't play anymore because we didn't have a keyboard player and we just we didn't know if it was going to continue but uh we had the pleasure of meeting Alex like you said at, at that point I had been playing with a band called Familiar Walls for just about half a year if that even 
playing with them for a little while. And at that point, we were doing a gig every week. We were at bars. We were out doing other stuff. And the gig that they're referencing that we first met was a tribute show for a uh, Mexican restaurant called Chepos. And the way that I met these guys is they were actually the first band of our show because we had done one before and they were all eh, because we had a bunch of local acts come up and play a bunch of unknown songs and they were like well we want a band to come up and do a bunch of covers of top 40 hits so okay so we had a band come up to do that for half a show and we started our show with these guys going up and playing and i remember we we were talking about you know various classic rock stuff you know influences discussed music and whatnot and then the thing that we ended up actually bonding over was I said, do you guys want to get something to eat? And they all said, well, I'm kind of low on money. I was like, well, you know what? I'll pay. They said, well, it's kind of, you know, this is a legitimate Mexican restaurant. It's pretty, you know, not really, it's not really cheap. So I was like, well, I was just thinking we'd just hit up Taco Bell or something. <laughs> so we literally dipped a legitimate Mexican restaurant for Taco Bell. <laughs> on their anniversary. On their 25th anniversary. I was there as, as one of the people running the show, technically. Um... There wasn't enough seats. In and the we, uh, we, us three, Caitlin, my best friend from Minnesota, Taylor, like yeah. my friend John, who was down Whose from Osceola to watch us, John. John's car, and we had him. We had me the... hugging a gas can, like a gasoline can, in the back of the on the back of it was his Jeep or something, hiding under a blanket, hoping the cops wouldn't notice as we drove from one end of the city to another to the <laughs> freaking Taco Bell, and we pull in. I'm just like, all right, so I figure we get a couple grande meals and we just call it even. And the first thing Carl says is like, well, I'll have this, this, and this with mine. And I look at him, I'm going, man, I ain't buying one for everybody. <laughs> and he goes, oh, sorry. And so we, we sat down at the table and had further discussion. And uh, I didn't see or hear anything from them again till the next, till another show down the line that we did out at a, a farm in Palmer. And, uh, it wasn't long after that that I got the phone call from Casey saying, uh, so we just lost a couple members. What are you up to? <laughs> <laughs> we, we've ended up up a creek, as it were. Do you think you can help a brother out? And uh, so we just kind of went from there. And since then, we've finished off what is to be our first album. We've got a second one in the works. Actually, it's like pretty two far. two-thirds done. Yeah, it's much. like two-thirds done. They're ridiculously long songs. Um, like, not a one on ten minutes. Um, we have um, several covers in, under, I think the last count we did of all the stuff we know how to play is something like 35 songs or something like that. I want to say 38, but I think I'm just thinking. It was over 30. I remember. Who's yeah. counted? It's like the total Plus. number of originals we've written. We don't play all of them, but we've written, I think, it was 25 or 26 20. originals. Yeah. 26 originals. But that's including, like, Riot and, like, Bamf Bam Man. Man. <laughs> oh. We don't talk about that. We don't talk about <laughs> you that. You guys talk about <laughs> Rule number two. And rule number one. So what's the deal with Bamf Man? Oh! <laughs> we don't talk about that. <laughs> No, okay, so basically, do we talk about that? <laughs> no, we just said we don't talk about that. We said like three times. <laughs> it was just a really stupid thing that they put together. Okay, okay, no, this actually, I thought the song was pretty good back in the day. <laughs> we were also like sophomores and freshmen in high school. You'll think I, a lot of stuff is good I would in like high to school. go on record as saying I was not in the band at this point. I was not in the band when the song was written. To be fair, our original influence, like the reason I learned how to play guitar was like Tenacious D and Stephen Lynch, so... Like, it was not far. We were from originally the... a comedy rock group. <laughs> we, not really what we, we are not now. Really rock group at the beginning. And then I just sort of joined and was like, hey guys, let, let's do some stuff. Um, speaking of, uh, you know, writing stuff back when you were in high school, another thing of note is that three quarters of your band is extraordinarily young. I'd imagine that that creates problems when gigging oh, in a scene cool. that is heavily bar oriented. Well, you know, you, guys. you know, with me being only 16, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, really 16 I have a ever. theory about that, um, <laughs> no, I 16. think, <laughs> and my theory is that if, if your sound is more classic rock, then they'll cut you a little bit more of a break because it's the kind of music that the people in charge grew up on, whereas if you go in and you're like, Rawr, 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 rawr. <laughs> yeah, you actually had people dancing at your show at the S Lounge who were easily like in their fifties or sixties. Yeah, that was a funny. Day. I mean, and we we have such we have such a diverse sound that it's you know I, I I'd 
I'd like to think there's something you'll like if you stay for a little yeah. <laughs> Basically, it's a little bit tougher, though. Um, I kind of handle most of the band booking, and I can't even begin to say how many times I've gotten the message back. Um, we can't get underagers in, not even with their parents. Um, that's why we still haven't played Coots. It's why we haven't played the Anchor in a really long time. It's why we haven't played the Carousel, and we've only played Taproot the one time. It took a lot of effort, and it took a lot of stuff breaking pretty much exactly right. And um, my parents and Tony's mom and Carl's parents being out way later than they should be, even on work nights. My mom to pretending which we to be them. all of our moms. <laughs> Realize this is going Can't in public, see right? <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I'm the reason that um, there's not really a dad around. What? Are you talking about my dad? Not necessarily. <laughs> this is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to uh, explore this theory. Did you kill Tony Taylor's dad? <laughs> no. No, no. The kill is a strong word. <laughs> <laughs> No, I just... Notice no. the difference! Mortally <laughs> wounded, I would say. <laughs> the fall killed him, and the bullet did not. <laughs> the fall... I didn't kill him. A bullet killed him. Uh, <laughs> so here's yeah. kind of a cheesy question. <laughs> Um, if you guys could go back in time five years and give yourselves advice on making it in the local Alaska band scene, what advice would that be? Start the band because we didn't start till like three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I suppose there's that. Um, I would say that, start the getting the word that, out as heavily as possible, as early as possible. The thing for me is I wish that I had started playing music when I wanted to. Like, I, I began to be really interested in the drums when I was in like fifth grade and I guess I didn't push that hard but my parents were kind of like uh, it's just a passing phase and then I ended up not really picking them up until ninth or tenth grade if I had known that I was going to be in a band I would have pushed a bit harder to start in a music earlier that's really the only thing I regret yeah practice I, I'd like to say I, I wish I'd, I'd practiced more just in general well, here's kind of a more serious question. Uh, Mr. Alex the Viking, um, I often catch you on stage wearing a mask. And what I, really <laughs> <laughs> what I really need to ask is, why would you do this when you're clearly the most beautiful man in the room? Okay. So, is that what the paper says? <laughs> so, when, so when I first joined the band, so who's bet we, we started doing, we, we, we did our first show, I think, at the Anchor. Mm -hmm. And then we did a show, uh, the one of like the second or third show we did at the Avenue. Now when I first... It was the first one we did there. It was the first one we did at the Avenue, but I think it was my second or third show with the band. Anyways, um, it was a Halloween show, and Casey texts me, I don't know, like a couple weeks prior and says, Dude, we should all go in costume. I never heard a response from anybody else. So I sort of assumed everyone was going to go in costume. I always wanted to play in a trench coat, so I got my trench coat, you know, I rolled up the sleeves, and I got a Jason Voorhees mask. Oh, sorry, that's copyrighted. A hockey mask. <laughs> and um, I showed up with the mask and the coat, and I'm looking around, I'm going, wait a minute. <laughs> no one else showed up in costume. You bring your Basically, a friend of mine promised to do a candy skull paint, face paint for me. And it didn't, um, it, didn't it didn't come through because we pushed our, our we're getting ready to go to the day to we getting we pushed our getting ready to go to the showtime forward by like two three hours and she was still in class so well whatever the circumstances were in in my uh, I guess not really frustration but in my own sort of twisted sense of humor I said all right fine and just started playing shows with the mask on just because I could. And actually, for a while, I was just doing it to spite them because after a little while, they're like, could you, could you please not wear the mask? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, I could show up in the show, you know, with the mask. You know? <laughs> and then, I, and then I did, we did one show where I wore a uh, Guy Fox. Fox mask. Was it only one? Cutting it was, that, it was that Cutting Fox mask. Was and, and, it was, and it was the last show That's that I wore a mask at. I said, you know what, I, 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 I'll stop wearing the masks. And I haven't done one. Way. That was last year, I think. And I haven't, I haven't worn one since. Um, I still do the trench coat, but uh, that's just because I've always liked wearing a trench coat on stage. Next Halloween, guys, we're gonna follow through this time. No, because I'm not going on stage in a costume. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I? Could. I thought that would be perfect. 
So unfortunately, a lot of Alaska bands have had to move out of state to find success in the music business, uh, with Lavoy being the most recent loss to our community up here. Um, have you guys ever contemplated relocating, or do you think that Alaska has a chance in the long run of allowing local musicians to grow to their fullest potential? This is an issue where we are uh, somewhat divided, yeah. uh, I'll be honest. Uh, we all agree that we want to go down and tour, but individually we all have different opinions on where we want to end up. Personally, I would love for Alaska to be the home base. That's it's inspiring I to me. I love the scenery up here is great, and... I, uh, I don't know. I just like it up here too much to move permanently for the sake of music. I, uh, w I was kind of one of the really strong pushers for we should move elsewhere, and that's because to a certain degree, uh, part of your ability to gain uh, a bit more of a following to a certain degree, I feel, is deeply based in your ability to tour, and the Alcan is a little bit of a long drive where there's just no civilization for hundreds of hundreds of miles to uh, for it to be really effective out of Alaska, which is really unfortunate because it's a great town, actually. Anchorage is great. Even Palmer, Wasilla, um, Kenai, Homer, they're great places to go, great places to visit, and even great places to gig if you can set something up. But at the same time, there's that issue of uh, getting everywhere else, you know? I would say uh, to counter um, moving out of state, I don't know if this is realistic as of yet, but I've, I've kind of had a dream of opening my own venue or at least just buying a warehouse or something I can use for other purposes and then throw shows in and stuff like that. I've, I've kind of wanted to develop here a little bit, and, uh, but that's years down the line. Yeah, that would be awesome. You know, throw your own shows and just have like we do that anyway. Have the control to do it right, you know. <laughs> We've still not last like five good shows. No, you know, but like if we had a garage or something, you know, uh, a warehouse kind of thing where we could do it our way. I don't know. I know <clears throat> for me that Alaska will always be home base, um, and I can't honestly say about the future, but I do know that if, if it really just isn't working here, I, I do intend to try try at least for a little while down in the States. Thanks, guys. Uh, well, no, those are all, that was great answers. I, uh, um, do you guys have any more news you could give us about uh, upcoming albums or tours? Well, uh, well we're in the process of, of raising money to get into the studio again for an album. Um, we are hoping to do a tour around this time next year. We're um, saving money for that also. And uh, to that extent, we've put together, or we're putting together a Kickstarter for it, saving that money up. Um, we, yeah. we hope that our new album can be released, what we're looking at. Uh, um, if we could release the album by the end of next year, I think that would please the heck out of all year of us. next year? The end of this year. End um, of this year. <laughs> I, uh... I would like to say one of the most recent developments in Thunderfish Land is we finally got an official website up and running. Uh, it's www.thunderfishak.net, not dot .com. I think that dot .net was pretty clever because like, if you're a fish, they're fishermen, you, you get caught in a net. So that's a good way to remember it, I think. Good lord. <laughs> And oh. this is where the cheesy portion of the interview is. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, guys. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here and to talk with us and to let us into your home to film you and your natural you. habitat. Yeah, but nobody wants to uh, <laughs> uh, Once again, for the audience, this is Casey, Carl, Tony, and Alex of Alaska's very own Thunderfish. I'm Joshua Spring, and thanks for listening to the Alaska Commons.